Hi, I'm James, and in this video I'm taking a look at our brand new Dell Inspiron 15 3593 laptop, and we are going to be upgrading the various components within this laptop. And this is a new machine, so it hasn't been opened up before, and we're just going to start off by going around and releasing all the screws in the base of it. Unlike a lot of these machines, uh, this particular model has a DVD drive, so we are going to start off by removing that. So this screw here, and possibly this one here as well, attach the DVD drive, and then with those removed we can just slot the drive out, and then underneath it there are two additional screws. Uh, obviously if you have a version of the machine without the DVD drive this these screws will not be here there may be an additional chassis screw however it's fairly self-explanatory to go around the base and remove all the screws that you can see and what I'm doing is at the top here as I take them out I'm just putting them laying them out because there are some different length screws used. So we can see those ones in the top corner and for the DVD drive are slightly longer than the ones used here. This one, these two corner ones appear to be captive as I can't lift those out. Uh, so this machine is one of the few laptops currently available in the UK featuring the Intel Ice Lake chips, so the true 10th generation core i3 and i5 and i7 processors. Uh, this particular machine is one of the i3 chips, so it is a dual core. Um, there's an interesting division at the moment where you have the old 14 nanometer 10th generation chips which are up to six cores and then a smaller core count the 10 nanometer ones I guess to kind of help yields and so on at the moment. So if we can get this screw out or we'll just do it when we tip it. Okay maybe a captive one there as well and those two back corner ones definitely are. So with those screws removed we want to now flip the laptop over and we have a nice new pry tool and the service manual says to start at the back corner which seems a little weird to me but we are going to do as it instructs and it does not really want to move anywhere so I'm going to start at the front as I uh, normally would. So what we're going to do is just gently press this in straight down to push out the base panel and in doing so just separate out so as we work our way around there you can see we're just releasing the clips You don't want to apply too much force, you just want to sort of press down so that you can hear those separate out. And with as much of that done as possible, we will now close the laptop back over, turn it back over, and then gently just lift that base panel up towards the back of the machine and off. Now that we're inside the machine, obviously the first thing we should do before proceeding any further is we are going to find the connector here for the battery. And we are just going to, so a little hard to see here, but we want to push this on each side just to pull this connector out of the battery socket. Now the memory on this laptop 
is socketed uh, and we actually have two DIMM slots as well. So this machine came with four gigs of RAM as standard. And what you can do, if you want to remove the existing module, you can pull these little legs outwards and the memory will pop up and we can remove it as so. And then to refit it, we put it in again at this sort of, say 15, 20 degree angle, push it into place and push down. Now what we are doing here is we are upgrading this machine with a second uh, DDR4 memory module. Uh, and this slot actually goes the other way up um, because of the way it is keyed. So again, we just slot in our new memory module. And then push down. So all that's left to do now is to reassemble the machine. So we want to take our battery connector and because we have finished making changes, plug it back in. So slot that back in. Sorry, I realized I was blocking the lens as I did that. And then we want to take the base panel and put that into place, flip things back over, and then press the two panels together so that we can hear everything just clicking back. into place and in doing so this should all be you know fit should be and finish especially using a plastic pry tool do not use metal tools because they will mark up the plastic quite badly but having done that we can now close things back over and um, obviously with this kind of work you are technically voiding your warranty and um, particularly if you're fitting upgraded parts or non-genuine parts However, going through and doing this, there are really no warranty stickers or seals that are broken in this process. Um, so as long as you take care and you use plastic tools which aren't going to mark the chassis in obvious ways and you know basic precautions to avoid damage, you will probably get away with it in that regard. Um, obviously, if Dell say, you know, work out that the machine has been tampered with and refused that is you know on at your own risk however you know for basic work like this and returning it to standard afterwards we can get in and out of this without breaking any seals and without any obvious signs of entry on this sort of design um i hope you found this video useful and um, do be sure to let me know any questions or comments you have uh, I will be doing some performance testing of this laptop as well. And um, yeah, let me know any questions. Hit subscribe if you'd like to see more videos. Like this video because it does help us a huge amount in doing so. And yeah, really just thanks for watching. And I hope we've been of some help.